pass over to you. OK, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining Yardley Western Stetchford Ward uh, Forum meeting this evening. On the agenda this evening, we have ward plan priorities and we want to finalize our ward plan. And I believe we've got a number of suggestions that we've picked up over the last few meetings that we've put together and we're going to discuss them with the residents are in, in attendance this evening and then we're going to finalize our ward plan. And second item on the agenda will give a brief councillors update and thirdly, any other business. So Beverly, can we start with the vote priorities and we'll go through each item. OK, we'll Council, I'll, I'll, I'll try and share my screen now, so bear with me. And let, can you let me know whether or not you can see it when I start sharing? Okay. Does that work? No. OK, let's let's try again. Um, oh, bear with me a second. If you want to talk amongst yourself, I'll, try, I'll get it up now. I was going to say, Beverly, shall I just read it off the phone? Well, I've got it in front of me. Shall I make a start on it? Yeah, if you want to do that, and then what I'll do, I'll, I'll try and bring it up on the screen. OK. OK, well, one of the, well, the first priority for the ward is tackling flight tipping. It's a big issue on a, on a day, weekly basis, right? I must receive at least 15 to 20 emails regarding flight tipping. So. For me, that is a priority that we need to continue keeping the world clean. Right? We're not going to be perfect, but you know what I don't want to see is what neighboring wards see where we've got fly tipping on every street corner piled up. And so for me, keeping Yardley Western Statue clean is a is a is a, for me is the most important thing, right? Is and it's a lot of stuff what it's lot it's a lot what the residents want as well, right? They Whenever I speak to them, right, they say, please, if you can keep it clean for us, you know, if we, and I always say that, you know, the residents of this ward are the eyes and ears of the ward, right? So it's, it's okay, we can get it picked up. That in the easy part is actually asking the council to come along and pick it up. The problem we have, right, is we want more enforcement in the area. We want to know where this rubbish is coming from. We want to know who's doing it. And then that way we can actually work together and tackle tackle it more efficiently than we are at the moment, right? Because I don't really want to keep on asking the council, come, somebody's dumped it, come and pick it up. Right? What we need to be doing is finding the cause of the problem and then working towards that. I believe everybody that's here has that responsibility to work together. And I don't know, we've got a number of residents who are present this evening, and I'd like your views on what do you think of fly tipping and how how best should we be tackling it and what more can we be doing? So can I, I, I put Andy on the spot? Andy, can we have some input? Yeah, well, I think it's a I think enforcement, I think you're right. It is about trying to work out where it's coming from. Because it's, it's often not coming from within the ward. It's often coming from outside. And I guess that's what makes it really tricky. <coughs> I mean, <coughs> people who fly tipper, if they're sensible, are not going to leave a lot of evidence of who they are. And that that's the difficulty, isn't it? The only other thing is to try and make it easier for people to dump their rubbish where they should at, at the at the refuge 
central or whatever and I think the charges put a lot of people off and they just if they ain't got 20 quid to get it collected or whatever they just dump it somewhere well Andy I've I've always been vocal that we should be returning the bulky waste collection because I believe that did make a difference but obviously it's not down to us it's more of the who's running the council for them to decide if they think their approach is better than they have actually announced 7.2 million pounds this week to like tackle the flight tipping and well we'll see how that goes but I'm not too confident that that pl what they actually trying to implement will work but we can only give them a chance and see what happens Nadim can we have a stretch word Input. Yeah, uh, Councillor Baz, I think it's a really good st uh, first ward priority. I think uh, it's good that it, this is the first one um, because I think it links in with what you just said around, for me it's about ownership, not just what council, I know the council plays a high priority. I know you do as certainly as a councillor in the area, uh, in Yardley West and Stetchford. And I think there's a real ownership, but there was a real spirit a few weeks ago, if you remember Councillor Baz, where residents yourself came out to the Cascades Park, where we did that litter pick, huge amounts of, of uh, litter we picked up, joined in conjunction with the Leisure Centre and the people from the Leisure Centre. There was really good spirit. Now, I, I found through that spirit that you can generate, it, it's that, it creates that self-ownership of, it's not to say that we will just leave it for the council exclusively. We all play a part. And I think somebody said, I think it was in the last ward meeting, um, you know, if we all just look outside of our front doors and clean the patch that we can see in front of us, if everyone took that responsibility on, it'd make a big difference. But I know you, Councillor Baz, you, you've got a uh, another lit litter pick session going on or advertised in the next, I think it's this week, isn't it? That's right, on the Thursday at 5 Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I certainly, you know, fingers crossed I'll be there. Um, but I think this also links in somewhat into making sure that we can link, uh, tidy up to the green spaces that we've got. We've also on your patch, Councillor Baz, you've got the uh, Yardley Fields Recreation Ground. And I know that Samantha Hall, for example, from the Future Parks uh, scheme is looking to develop a, a Friends of Yardley kind of litter pick group, for example. So I think there will be stuff that can come out of this really positive. So from the residents association perspective, I, I can't, hopefully I can speak on behalf of everyone, but I think it's a really positive stuff. And I'm, I'm really glad that you've put this as uh, the first priority. OK, thank you, Nadine. Uh, well, we have a little bit. Well, the second item, well, priority for us is to do with litter, right? A lot of residents that I speak to are complaining that the streets are filthy and we never see a litter, uh, the council actually come around to litter pick anymore. And, and you know, there's so many reasons why they don't do it. And because of the COVID situation is probably the main cause of litter not being picked up as frequently as it should be. So over the last few months, right, we've actually across Yardley West and Stetchford, we've actually taken on this initiative, right, where we've got the community involved. We started off at the Oaklands Park. We've done a couple of big cleanups there. We've gone into Stetchford, we've done a couple there. And again, this Thursday, we've got another big cleanup on the Littleton Road and Redthorn Grove. And then on Saturday morning, we're going back to Oaklands, again, where we've got another big cleanup planned. And this is only possible with the help of the residents. Because I remember when we did our first litter pick going back over a year ago, and we decided to clean one road and the night before, well, the, the day before, one of the residents went around and she knocked on every door to remind people that we're doing a litter pick and so please come out and get involved. And on the day, it was just me and two of the residents. And there was only three of us. And before we even started, right, we were kind of defeatist in the sense that how are we going to manage only three of us when we've knocked every door, asking people to help, and nobody's actually bothered to come out. So we kind of got halfway up the road and we kind of gave up and thinking, you know, it's too much for three people to do. But now going forward, right, we've kind of 
got more residents involved because the council are providing the equipment and there's a more, I, I believe residents are more, you know, uh, they've seen the lockdown and, you know, they've had that impact of staying at home and in, within the environment and then they've seen outside and they've seen the litter and everything and now they want to do a more hands-on approach where they're happy to get involved and we've seen that at the Oaklands with the first cleanup where we had 45 people turn up right and then we had another Oaklands one where we had 55 and we've done Kestrel Avenue large walk where we had 14 residents turn up so this is something that we've started and I've already had a phone call earlier on well I think it was two days ago where we had somebody ring me up to say, when are we doing Albert Road in Stretchford? So that's, I said to him, okay, once we get tonight's meeting out the way, we can look to Albert Road and plan for that for next week. And all I would say is that I believe, right, okay, the council has a responsibility to keep our streets clean, but also we should take it upon ourselves as well. You know, even if everybody did outside their own doorsteps, that would make a big uh, difference. But then even as a community, right, I'm pretty confident now that we can actually draw, draw out the community when we need to. And we also mm -hmm. have the local police, Yardley police have been very supportive. The PCSOs, they've always come out whenever we've asked or they've seen it advertised, they've always come out and they've always played their part. And on Thursday, we've, also, uh, we've asked the Stetford police, I've emailed the sergeant uh, for Thursday's event as well to say that please if you got anybody in your team that's available please send them down because it's about making the community better right and it's a community event and I believe the police should be part of that community because that's what our residents want to see they want different uh, partners involved in this so I'll just throw it back to Andy Andy can we have some input on this as well please yeah, so yeah, I think I think the litter picks are really, really good, and people are really enthusiastic. Um, yeah, done well, done well on the litter picks, and we do. I think the more people that, and the more often we do them, the more people who want to join in, because um, you know there's lots of benefits around people also get to chat to each other outside after COVID, that's great, and it's safe. So if you can make it a bit of a social occasion as well. I mean, I like going up because I see everybody. I'm not sure I do much litter picking, but I do quite a lot of chatting. Um, but it's great, isn't it? And uh, we just need to keep the pressure on the council so that if somebody drip, um, fly tips some large items that the community can't really manage to clean up then then that's picked up swiftly and and dealt with so i think you know um the community are keen to keep their litter you know they're clean to do their bit but if there's larger stuff gets fly tipped you know because it We've had washing machines and all mattresses and all sorts of stuff, uh, and rubble and bricks and that's the stuff that the council need to need to support us with. Andy, anything, any large items, right? I can happily arrange to get them removed, right? Even this morning, I reported an American fridge freezer that's been dumped on Debenham Road. And I've asked that to be collected as soon as possible because of the way it's been dumped, right? Yeah. Any any That's big items that we can we, get that I mean, I think I think people are keen to keep their keep streets clean and to help pick up the litter and the general sort of rubbish that's left lying about. But um, it's when people come out from outside and dump large amounts, then that's more difficult difficult for the community to do isn't it because and it also demoralizes people doesn't it if, if it's not if everybody's not doing their part so um. you've seen yourself andy and nadim the cleanups that we've done where we've got communities involved right and then others have seen us doing it and they've said oh, can you let us know next time when it's happening we want to get involved 
And then yeah. we also like the mind of people like uh, come up to us just to say thank you. And you know, is this this a very small appreciative uh, comment that you know makes it all the worthwhile? Like thinking you know we're doing something that okay, some people for whatever reason can't take part, but at least they're grateful of our efforts. And well, it that, encourages yeah. them to put their rubbish in the bin, doesn't it? When they see the community out picking up the rubbish, it encourages them to do their little bit. If they can't litter pick up for whatever reason, we just need to encourage people to take their litter home with them, you know, particularly in Oaklands Park. If everyone who had a picnic took their litter home with them, it would be a lot better. Because the bins wouldn't get so full and it wouldn't, wouldn't be quite as tricky. I know they're trying to get a, a big bin put, a big skip put on the Oakland so that when we do litter pins and things, it can go straight into the skip. That's right. Is there, PC Smith, would you like some add some comments to this item? Um, yeah, um, I'll be honest, it's interesting you say Albert Road, we, you know, we're dealing with an issue of fly tip in there okay. um, at the moment and we're sort of assisting um, environmental health. Uh, in terms of the litter picking, um, I was just wondering if there's a schedule you have or anywhere where we can gain access to that because um, as you said, and I, I do think it's very important because at the end of the day, the police are the community and the community of the police. So I think us assisting you on litter picking, I think, is, is very important because it shows that, you know, that it's not just ad hoc members of the community. It's sort of like a planned thing and it's everybody coming together as one. So, I, you know, I was just wondering if you've got any sort of like schedule or if there's any way you can sort of bring to, our, bring to light any availability. Because I know in the police, um, you know, we tend to be very busy. So we like to sort of have a bit of a schedule. So if, if there's anything at all. Um, you know, that'd be really useful. Well, literally, the way we do it, right, it's just random days and evenings, right? Like, whenever somebody says something, then we just look at, yeah, like giving it four or five days' notice and then deciding, okay, let's pick a day, pick a time, and we'll just go out and do it. Because we've got one, the next one for Stetchwood is this Thursday at five o'clock. And we're going to yeah. be meeting at Albert Road and Littleton Road corner by the roundabout. Uh, Councillor Baz, I think we can always. You know, pick up a, a, an agenda item at the residence That's uh, meeting. Is. So every month we have our monthly residence meeting, mm -hmm. and I've always been keen to kind of get as many people from uh, not just Birmingham City Council, but councillors attend, uh, uh, and also would love to have you know representation from the police if it was possible. So, it, 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 I think that would be a useful place to a placeholder to have those kind of discussions, because as I said on the twenty fourth of May, which is this Thursday, we've got. A major meeting around the Yardley Fields, which I've mentioned, there will be a lot of stakeholders there. So we've got a huge amount of green, many green spaces that we have, are and will be proactively kind of working with the council to, to make sure that those green spaces are, are nice and tidy, which links into the, brilliantly links into those two top two priorities: tackling fly tipping, litter picking, and I, and I totally agree with. Um, uh, the, the the point just made about you know everybody's you know um the residents are the eyes and ears it's all about community policing isn't it in in one respect so i think that's a really good idea um the more we can do the better and i think it's it would be good to be, to do targeted action as well and so so i think there's because there's so much overlap between you know yardley east and yardley west because it's only it's only the main high street which separates mm -hmm. the two so I think um, I, I just wonder if we can just somehow twin up the two areas together sometimes and coordinate that. But there's, uh, yeah, I think that's a really good idea. Well, I think, you know, the more the word gets out, right, because obviously whenever somebody sees us in the area doing it, then, it, you know, it gives them that uh, opportunity as well to say, you know, we want to get involved, we want our street done, and we can bring out residents from our street. So I said, you know, Let's, we've tried, we're going to go on to Littleton Road on Thursday and depending on how many people turn up, right, we're going to see if we can do get Redtone Grove done as well. Right? Have and you have you advertised it, Cancer, on the on the social media, on Nextdoor? 
it's all on social media, right? Okay. And we basically, because I've got contact numbers of residents, about 10 to 15 houses up there on the Littleton and Redthorn. I've yeah. actually sent them a WhatsApp of the poster. Okay. So we're just trying to draw right, you know, the, obviously the more, the more residents that we get, you know, the easier it becomes, right? And what I don't want to see, right, is a couple of us just struggling along, you know, and it's, you'd rather have a community coming out and being proud to, you know, work together and get it done. Yeah, because I'm just thinking I might be able to advertise because we have our own database uh, at the Village Forum. So I might advertise or indeed if you've got, um, we've got our own Facebook page as well. So we can advertise that. If you, if you, if you can do that would help because yeah. I've spoken to Sister Mora and a few others on Littleton and they, they can't wait. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. And, and as you say, you have your high vis jackets. You know, we've got the equipment. We've got, um, the, we've got all the equipment there. We ain't got an issue with the equipment, right? And e even if we need equipment for future events, right? I can always get that equipment. That ain't a problem. The problem we only have, right, is getting out the residents, right? Because ideally, right, if we have more numbers, right, it's going to make it more of a community event. And, you know, you can get more done in less time. And that's I did really what we should be aiming for. But that is the second priority for me. Them two are like first, second, right? Are the two main talking points in the world are uh, fly tipping and litter. And we're going, you know, we're tackling them as best as we can. But the residents are the eyes and the ears of the world. So if they see any, have any information of who's dumping it, please let me know. If there is any fly tipping being dumped, you can always email me with the details and then I can always go back to the council to ask them to get it removed. And stuff, you know, we can act, we have actually, you know, compared our war to neighboring war, right? You can see the difference right, where we are actually winning flight on the war on fly tipping and we're actually winning with litter as well, our ward isn't as dirty as other wards. So, you know, we can work together and literally what we need is residents, the police, the councillor, all come together and make a team as one, right? And, you know, we can actually make a big difference and we have been making a difference. The third priority for the ward is speeding and dangerous driving. I believe we need to be doing more speed watch operations across the world. We did a few in 2018 on Wash Lane, but then after that, with the pandemic and everything, it kind of, everything's got quietened down. But we need to be doing more because the issue of speeding is quite serious across both Stretchford and Yardley. And we need more police involvement to tackle the speeding. What I can say for Wash Lane, last well, last week we actually signed off a bit. Well, we had a budget of about ten thousand pounds that we for ward minor measures, and we've actually signed it off to say that we want speed calming measures on Wash Lane from the roundabout going up to Millhouse, right? So that hopefully should make a difference because we've actually when we did a speed watch operation on the uh, wash lane in 2018. We did actually clock somebody doing 59 miles per hour. And that is, you know, especially around school time, if you can get somebody doing 59 miles per hour, and if so, if that was to impact on a child or any, anybody around there, you know, the consequences could be very serious. So for me, speeding is a major issue. And even around Stetchford, when you're coming off the uh, roundabout on Alba Road at the light, like trying to beat the lights on Richmond Road, you'll see cars putting their foot down just to beat the lights, and you can see them going up to 40, 45 miles per hour. And especially when we've got a sc school, Stretchford Primary, there we've got the mosque on the corner of Richmond Road, so it is dangerous, and you know, we need to be doing more. And for me, that is another, well, the third priority that we need to be tackling. And I'd like, you know, 
Andy, what would you say regarding speeding? Because I know you're very vocal regarding speeding. Yeah, well, you know, there's been some tragic accidents in the ward and, um, you know, last summer we had a tragic death um, due to to traffic and, uh, and particularly around... Um, both around Blakesley and around Hobmore, you know, um, people parking considerately, and I know that's coming up, but I, but all, but the speeding combined with the inconsiderate parking is a real real danger to young people, and you know it's already been proven how tragic it can be, uh, uh, and so. You know, we do need to make people more aware of the speed that they're doing and also the way that they're parking because, you know, we can't afford young lives to be lost or people to be injured um, because people just don't think or they just drive too fast or, you know, uh, uh, and it is a bind sort of going at 20 miles an hour and it can be frustrating. But, you know, the less cars we can have on our roads and and the slower speeds, then the less chance there's going to be of serious injury. You know, it's a nightmare. You know, you take your life into your hands around, around Hobmore, you know, when the kids get dropped off and the same at Blakesley, really. You just run the gauntlet every day. And I'm surprised, you know, and that that does result, unfortunately, in being in some real tragic accidents. And the parking just is so annoying to 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 the neighbours and and everybody. You know, I think it's right. It's a a huge priority. Okay, uh, PC Smith, can we have a comment from yourself? Regarding speeding? Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's quite an issue, to be honest, at the moment. And, you know, recently, especially, you know, it's been highlighted definitely in, for example, the Birmingham Mail, there's been a lot um, of incidents whereby people have um, either been seriously injured or tragically lost their lives. So, I, it, you know, it, it's the consequences of speeding are massive. And I, yeah, I definitely agree with you. I think from a policing standpoint, it's quite it's quite difficult sometimes to get the resources, um, especially in Birmingham East, due to there being, for example, you've got Washwood Heath, you've got um, um, you've got off the top of my head Spark Brook, and the, you know they sort of tend to concentrate the resources there. But it is a massive problem as well in Stetford, as you say. Um, and it, in Yardley's in general, and Yardley West, and I think if there's ever any intelligence in relation to where you know where they, for example, there's meetups um, or where there's incidents where people are speeding, I think it's important that somebody feeds that back to the police, so that way then we can begin to set about operations. Um, you know, because we know it's happening. But unless we're given the intelligence, it's very difficult to sort of put to put in place an operation. Um, so if there's ever any intelligence, perhaps um, Councillor Baz or anybody here, you know, if you can feed it back to your local neighbourhood team, that way then we can sort of begin to set about putting in, in place operations where we can then take resources from where they're being concentrated elsewhere and then we can start using them to enforce speeding in the area. Can I just add, PC Smith, are you able to put your um, contact information into the chat? Of so I can answer. Yeah, I was going to do that at the end, and I was going to ask if um, some of you guys can as well, because that way then we can, you know, we can keep in touch regarding this matter, um, and I can forward your your details onto my sergeant um, as well. So of course I can. Thank you. Okay, Nadim, can we have your 
thoughts on Sweden? Yeah, I mean, I think it was cancelled, but I echo everything that, in particular, Andy P.C. Smith have just said. Um, I also said what, what Bev just put into the comments uh, around um, speed watch activities, traffic calming measures, which were introduced on Albert Road, for example. I mean, the main high street, which is the station road, historically in the past, we know in recent times, and I said I don't know the ins and outs of the case because I said it's still kind of still relatively fresh but there was a fatality at the bottom of Station Road where the Shell garage is. Now I'm not saying that that was linked to speeding but what I'm saying is that you know one fatality is too much when it involves um, a vehicle and you know uh, uh, as horrendous that, as, as that was we've all got to be vigilant uh, and my, I've always had this strong opinion is that manufacturers you know make these vehicles that you know, they focus on horsepower and Newton meetings meeting of talk. But we've got to think that none of these vehicles will ever on the public road be able to do this type of speed. Now, you can, if certain vans, for example, on a motorway, you see the signs in the back of them, they're speed limited. Now, I've always felt, based on the data that we have, is that if you're, if you're a person who's relatively new to pass, passing a vehicle or whatever, Vehicles should be lim speed. There should be a speed limiter, and in order to remove the speed limiter, for example, you can, you know, you, you you'll need to show or demonstrate years of, you know, use on the on the public road. I I, I the, or or the insurance premiums need to be higher. I'm just, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but you know, successive governments have tried to kind of tackle this. But I do I do agree that this is a really good priority. Um, but how will we do it? I mean, does the data say that, for example, there's a certain demographic? Are, are most of the, is most of the speeding done by a certain age group of driver, Councillor Baz, would you say? Or is it across the board? You, do you see what I'm trying to say? Is, it, is, is there targeted action that needs to happen here? And, and, and do we need to consider what, what more insurance companies can do about this as well? Because part of the problem is the bigger picture here as well, I think. I'd say speeding, you, you can always say speeding is, you know, you can't put an age limit to speeding because you could be 18 or you could be 60 and whoever wants to put their foot down will, regardless of age, they will do it. But for me, it's all about safety. And, you know, because we've got local schools very close by, right, and a lot of speeding that actually does happen happens very close to the local schools and it's not even confined to a certain time in the day as well it's like throughout the day you'll see cars speeding up and down wash lane or onto richmond road or they've always even going onto frederick road like mary road there's always cars speeding up and down and it is a, like it's been brought to my attention by the residents that you know something needs to be done before something serious happens right and that's why we've taken on the approach that we we were given ten thousand pound for ward minor measures right and wash lane over the last four about four to six months has had about four serious accidents and they were all down to speeding Right, so okay, really, can, if I can ask a question, Councillor Bear, sorry to, to jump in. So, you know, you've got the cameras which are on the, is it the Boards the Green side? Okay. Now, I'll take it as assumed that those cameras are fully operational, they work. Okay. Them cameras are for the bus lane. Yeah, but they, okay, so they don't, they're not speed cameras. It's, okay, so it's, it's more to do with, with driving in, in the appropriate lane. So, maybe, I, I just, just me thinking, I don't see a lot of, there's not, a, I've never come across a speed, I've seen the occasional speed van and there's a speed camera on the Bromford lane, for example. I think there's like chevrons and there's there's two speed cameras, one on one side, one on the other, where the police station is on Bromford Road. But maybe something, maybe you could, I'm just thinking out loud, maybe a speed camera strategically placed in some places. I don't know, I'm just, or more see, speed, mobile mm, speed vans. Well, that's something that we can take up with the sergeant as well to see if we can actually do that because then it does come down to health and safety as well because when we tried doing the speed watch with this we had the speed gun out right we couldn't do it on certain roads because of how narrow the roads were and there was no way if they were going to pull over the drivers they needed some kind of open space to do it in so 
we are limited in that sense where we can actually do speed watch. But we can always take that back to the local police teams to see if there is anything else we can do. Yeah, but, yeah, OK, is there? Shall we move on to the next priority, which is co people and community cohesion? Right, I, Yardley Western Statute right, is a very diverse ward. You got members from all sorts, all, from all backgrounds, right? And the best of Yardley, right? I go, I refer back to our litter picks. You know, we had people from all backgrounds turn up, and it actually. You know, when we seen people from different backgrounds come together, I right, and it made it that we were showcasing the best of Yardley and Stetchford with the people uh, because of the people of, from what backgrounds they were from, and that's what I would like to see more. I know Stetchford Village Forum they do a lot of work, especially bringing communities together and same with the Oasis community. They actually do put on events, but we need to be doing more because you know. There is more and more people moving in from different backgrounds in the Yardley and Stetchford, right? And how better, right, if we can bring the community together, right, and actually engage with each other. And I believe by engaging with one another, right, we can create a, a world that we can all be proud of. And, you know, then, because when I first came in, like, when I first got elected, there was an issue when we were like speaking to residents right, and they said, well, we've been here so long for 20, 30 years, but we don't actually speak to our neighbors and we've never really made the effort of trying to speak to them as well. And I, I've said to them, you know, well, you know, maybe if you speak to them, you know, you can get to know each other and that way you can build that community link together. And s some of them actually, when they came back to me and they said, you know what, it's actually, you know, we, because we made that move, right, it kind of brought us closer together and now we're best of friends. And I said, you know, and that's something that we want to create across the world, right, where we can say, listen, regardless of what colour you are, regardless of what background you are, you know, we need, as a community, right, we, we want to work together. So whether somebody wants to do a litter pick or whether somebody wants to do something else in the world, we're happy to support you and we want to build on that. Right, and that is how I believe, right? Yardley, you know, when I, I, it's probably going to be biased when it comes from me, but Yardley Western Stretchwood, right, is like no other ward in Birmingham, right? Because whatever, when we, do something, when we do something on a big scale, right, we actually do it better than all the other wards because we actually bring out the communities, right, and we put on an event that we're actually, we can look back on and say, you know, we're actually proud of what we achieved, but I'd like to see that on a more regular basis, right, that we can actually draw the community together and say, okay, we can do this, but give us your ideas and, you know, let's put these events on and put Yardley West, you know, show people what we are, you know, how passionate we are about doing stuff and how we help, even during the pandemic, right, Yardley Western Stetchwood, the residents of Yardley Western Stetchwood stepped up like no others, right? The stories that I got told, right, was that how they were helping each other and how they were there for each other. And that is, you know, that is showcasing what we are about in Yardley Western Stetchwood, that we actually look out for each other. Okay, can I, Nadim, can you... Yeah, I, would say, I, I think, Councillor, but I think what you've said, you know, it's very difficult to top that because it, you've hit the nail on the head uh, on, in, in everything you've said. Communities, I think it's people and communities, the glue that binds all of this together. Let's be honest, if you look at all of your priorities, fly tipping, litter picking, uh, you know, the, everything, and just looking at the, the email that, that PC Smith sent through, we, we, it's, it's such an inclusive um, uh, award. I think it's, particularly as it's in East Birmingham, literally a mile away, you can look at the other side of East Birmingham, you can look at Alan Rock. You, it's, it's, you know, you've got different communities. Some communities have been here, you know, you talk about the Windrush generation, communities uh, from the Commonwealth, former Commonwealth territories, 
came here to settle in the 50s and 60s, then you've got other communities that maybe have come through from other parts of the world and other continents, whether it's Africa, whether it's South America. So I would say that Stetford is a microcosm of people of the world, so many different languages. It, so what we see in Bird, and it's a very young community, it's, it's dynamic. And I think, you know, we can, what I've noticed in my, in my couple of years I've been working with the Village Forum is that there's a real appetite for, you know, communities to get involved with activities and projects. So we do, do with things like the, the litter pit being one, you know, we do big lunches, we, we um, you know, whether it's uh, faith-based organisations coming together or non-faith-based. So it's bringing all of the communities together, but wrapping it around certain projects that people will want, we will mix and, and be encouraged to kind of connect with. So the more of that we can do, brilliant. I know, for example, Andy does some brilliant stuff at Oasis Hub More, connecting communities, and, and I think that's fantastic to see. And, and I think equally with the residents, what we've equally got are fantastic stakeholders, police being one, we've got engaged, really engaged uh, representatives from the council, councillors, MPs office. So I think it all knits in and bodes well for the future. So I think this is a great it's great for you to put this as a priority. And I'm thinking, for example, we've got the Commonwealth Games coming up next year. And I'm sure that there'll be next summer, as we can get past this, hopefully, you know, this period of restrictions and lockdown, more and more people in the residence will be much more actively engaged and we can certainly play our part in that. So, yeah, um, great, great stuff. OK, Andy. Yeah, so. What always amazes me is our young people that live in Stetchford and Yardley West. That um, I think that that they they are just huge positive role models, and um, the young people that I meet that are are twelve to eighteen are are. are, are just, they're just so passionate about tackling racism um, tackling any sort of prejudice um, tackling any sort of um, you know from from any sort of injustice uh, and if we can bring them together which we are doing then um, you know that, that gives me great hope for the future you know I've got the footballer uh, uh, Hogmore, which has um, young people from across across the ward, you know, there's 13 different ethnic groups there. And I was asking them their ethnicity, um, uh, 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 and they just look at you blank, like, what are you on about? Uh, uh, and, and one of them said, and what does what? Why does that matter? And um, so I got a bit of a telling off. Why are you collecting that? Because why does that matter? What a great attitude to have. Um, it's, you know, now and again, I think it's in older adults where where there's suspicion and a bit of where people need to get to know each other a little bit better. But to be honest, I don't see very much at all. And you know, it is about sharing what we've got in common and events, putting on events and the chance for people to meet each other, whether that be through street parties or through events or celebrations. I, I think particularly after COVID where people have been shut in their own homes, just coming out and, and, and meeting each other again and um, you know, I think it's a great priority and something that we need to keep working on. We need to make most of the Commonwealth Games, um, you know, where, where it'd be a great, a great celebration, really, of of everyone. You know, we can have our own Commonwealth in Stetchford and Yardley, never mind the official one. We've got our own Commonwealth and that's what we what we want, you know, everyone to be looking after each other for the for what we have in common. Thank you, Andy. Uh, PC Smith. 
Yeah, I think, you know, really echoing what everyone said. I mean, the community as a whole, I think, is, you know, they do tend to sort of pull together and try and help each other. I remember, um, you know, it, it was mentioned earlier about speeding with regards to the uh, gentleman who sadly died on on Station Road and, and how the community sort of banded around together and, and, you know, the outpouring that there was after that. And in reality, I think, you know, that kind of shows what Stetford and Yardley, you know, really is is about. You know, they, they support each other. And through COVID, we've seen that as well. Um, you know, with regards to the um, food bank and whatnot, we've had, you know, because um, we obviously work with the food bank and as, as I would imagine some of you guys do as well. And they were saying how much um, they've sort of had how much food they've sort of had and, you know, what they've given, all these parcels and stuff. And I think it's about sort of promoting that. So that way then people can sort of further get involved. And I think that's a really important thing to to really promote all the good work. Um, with regards to um, community cohesion and sort of all the, the positives with regards to the whole borough. And that way then we can sort of, you know, try and build on that. That's right. Okay, thank you. I'd just like to add, we've got, not got any representatives from uh, the mosque on Albert Road or Richmond Road mosque, or we ain't got nobody from Stetford the Baptist Church. But these three uh, religious institutes in my ward right, actually play a big part mm -hmm. in community work. And, you know, like their, their doors are open to all communities. And some of the work that they do, right, is unbelievable. Because I've actually seen, witnessed it firsthand, that they actually engage with the communities to say, come inside, have a look at our work, right, and how we can work together, regardless of your background. And, you know, we've got, you know, it, it is a very positive step in the in the world, right, to say that we've got places like this that are actually encouraging people of faith or no faith to come together and say, listen, our doors are open. To you and come and have a look at what we're trying to do for this area and that's something more we need to encourage but i'd also like to see you know because everything we're doing today is building a brighter future for the younger generation of tomorrow right so we basically we need and that's something else i'd like to see is more young generation involved in all our projects whether is flight to tackling fly tipping, litter, speeding. You know, get the young generation. We need to get more youngsters involved in all our projects because by bringing them up in a good way, right? Then you know that that kind of brings them up on the right step to say that listen, this is how we should be doing it, and you know, then they can pass that message on to their friends and family and everything, and that is how we're gonna progress as a world. So th that is something that you know. As a community group, we need to be encouraging more, and hopefully we can make a big difference. Well, I would ask yes. Councillor Paz, it would be, be good, I don't know if it's possible, but uh, I, I assume she's still on the call, but a bit, a bit more maybe from Pat, being obviously the Neighbourhood Services Directorate, and, and hearing how the Neighbourhood Services Directorate sees some of your thinking, because I've always felt, you know, yes, civic duty is such a major thing, you know, get engagement, levels of engagement, getting people involved with what's happening in terms of access to services and the fact that it's, it, it whether it's, as you mentioned, the faith-based organisations, the mosques or the churches or people may, you know, may not be affiliated to religion, but it's it's just bringing and connecting communities together. And, and I think the critical thing is, is linking somewhat some of the strategy that the council have got, linking it and aligning it to the work that you have as well, as a council and your priorities, but also linking it to the wider strategy that the local residents have in terms of, so I'm just speaking for the village forum here, but we have projects and activities that we're running, but we can easily connect more. And the more that we build in more partnership working, that's only gonna be a good thing. That's right. Pat, Pat do you wanna comment on this? I was just about to put something in the chat, um, Councillor, about the document about working together in Birmingham neighbourhoods. So I don't know if those on the call have actually read that document, but that's kind of like one of our found the foundation as well as the future plans for 
for Birmingham um, going forward. So yes, there are documents and we are moving um, with strategies and working with yourself in local areas. So the comments that Nadim has made, that is, is very valid. And that's what we would like to do and want to do, uh, particularly from the Neighbourhood Development and Support Unit. Thank you. OK, I, I, we can move on to our next priority, affordable social housing, focus on rejecting unsuitable planning applications, HMOs, exempt accommodation providers. Those that know me will know that how much we have to actually, how much work we have around HMOs in the world. Over the last two years, they've seemed to be cropping up everywhere now. and. There is literally not a lot we can actually do because if they're five bed or under, they don't need a license. And a lot of these have been, you know, you can open them and they, they know the loophole. The providers know the loophole, right? So they're opening them up. And I would say probably 75% of the HMOs or supported accommodations that we have in the world are problem. We do have problems related to these and we are actually been very active in working with the police and the community safety team and the council as well you know only last week we've reported about three three of these across the world that are causing problems we've got issues of drug dealing antisocial behavior you know drunkenness and there's also you know they're all related and obviously those that Yardley Western Stretchwood, right, is a very quiet area in that sense, right, where it has been residents like the roads that they live on, right, are very, you know, like neighbor friendly and everything. And now they've got to put up with this kind of behavior on their doorstep. And it's not, it's not perfect in any way. And we need, I believe we, there should be a cap on each area should have a cap on the, the amount of HMOs that we can actually be allowed to open in the area. Because at the moment, I stretch what is, you know, every there's at least four or five that I know of that are in the planning to like in the progress of getting ready made to be up and running, right? And I believe that's only going to have a major effect on the area. And again, in Yardley, we've got a couple in the ring. Right, and we had issues. There was a rumor that there was a certain individual living in one of them, and the rumor turned out to be false. But then, that kind of fear that he brought in the community for the few days that until we actually got the answers that we wanted, it kind of you know the the community was on edge. Right, and this is what I believe. Okay, we have we have a duty of care, you know, to provide accommodation to the these people that want to be living there, but I believe that too many of them in one area is not good enough either, right? Because then it's only going to bring the area, it's going to give the area a bad name. And that's something that we should be looking to avoid. So, Nadim, can you add something to that? Yeah, I mean, for example, I mean, Councillor Baz, again, another good priority. I mean, I've been also side by side in parallel to my work as a working in the village forum last couple of years over the last couple of months i've been on a steering group with the organization shelter and they've been developing uh, 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 it was a steering group they set up to look at essentially issues around housing exempt accommodation providers hmos and they're developing essentially a, a charter for fair housing in birmingham now that's been developing and a lot of activity around that is looking at some of the issues that you've just raised. It is a problem. Some of it manifests itself largely from the fact that for years and years and years, this is not, I'm not looking at this as a, as a political thing, but, you know, post, post the 1970s, just or maybe before that, there just haven't been enough housing that has been built sufficiently to accommodate the numbers of people now who are seeking accommodation, whether it's temporary accommodation, whether it's HMOs, whether it's exempt accommodation providers, this has only kind of developed more and more because the private sector no longer can support, for example, a lot of people who are on benefits, 
And I'm not saying that that's exclusively the issue, but if they're now being squeezed out of the private sector, you're going to have a lot more landlords now who are thinking, well, I can convert. And in Stetchford and Yardley, you've got the types of properties, post-Victorian properties, which are huge and large. They can easily be accommodated. If you're the owner of them, you're going to think, well, I can, I can turn these into five units. And if I do my figures and maths right, I can then end up with quite a lot of money. So it, it essentially, there's a market that's been developed naturally because the private sector now is no longer being able to accommodate people on lower incomes. So where do they go? They go to these kind of HMOs, and many of them are unregulated, sadly. And then obviously, you know, you you hear a spate of lots of other kind of issues that emerge from that. Um, so we need a, a charter, a regulatory body that kind of hopefully will look at this. I know there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes because of that. But similarly, at the village forum, Councillor Baz, and as you know, you attend our village forum meetings, we always have a planning segment within our meetings where we look at planning applications. So having a residence association where there's vigilance amongst the, re amongst the residents, we have a triple lock in the sense that you get notifications, we will kind of look at applications. So we can almost, moving forward, minimise the types of applications that we would consider to be not in the interest of the local local area. It's about conservation, protection, thinking about residents. Naturally, there will be some planning applications which will be legitimate, but kind of saying, well, we don't want this to become an area or a hotspot for problems. So we can do our part as a res residents association, look at planning applications and anything which is, you know, which we think, well, there's an issue here. We can get onto it and, and potentially put our objections in. Um, but but once they with the ones that already do exist, this is where I think there needs to be a bit a, a bit of a bit more kind of strategic thinking here. So working with against again the police, local authorities that can hopefully kind of if there are complaints that are coming in, you know what powers do they have? I don't know. So I don't know the answer to this, but it's kind of working with other kind of primary stakeholders as well as residents to kind of move forward and hopefully make this situation better. But again, I think it's a good priority. Okay, Andy. So I think we need to target the landlords who are creeping off big money um, because often the residents that live in, in this accommodation don't have a lot of choices. They're often um, treated extremely badly and um, Basically, the landlords just do what they want. Um, they charge huge amounts of money for substandard accommodation, and that just adds to the problems that, that you know, the 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 stress and the problems that that some people have already got. So, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with a well. Uh, with, with a well-run HMO that um, supports its residents and looks after them and treats them well, there's nothing wrong with that. But it, it is what's wrong with it is when when the landlords treat treat people so so badly and that confounds the problems that they've got, increases like their debt or or whatever. You know, it's about having responsible landlords, in my view. And that's something I agree on, because the the like the number of cases I've dealt with over the last few weeks, right? What we found, right, is that they're not being supported at all, right? The the landlords are, and the providers are actually making the money right but there's no actual support for the people that are living in these places right so we need more you know there needs to be more action on these providers to say that okay we're giving you x amount of money right but what are you actually doing with this money what support are you providing and no, I, and often they're not given proper um proper tenancy agreements they're often often the real the, the rules aren't followed. Um, they're threatened with eviction all the time. They're, they're 
put into huge amount of debt and then then you know what to pe you know people have nowhere to go and they that they they choose things that that we perhaps might see as being antisocial but but if i was them would i choose the same i you know i don't judge people but but i do judge the landlords that are making a huge amount of money and basically don't um you know don't take their responsibilities seriously and basically abuse people for the profit that they're, they're the people that I think need to be targeted. That's right. Because, Andy, I'm all for, you know, if 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 they've been run properly, right, then I've got no issues. But then if they've not been run as they should be, then, you know, we, that's where we need to be taking on a hard line with these providers to say, you know, you're not doing, doing it as you should be. And then, you know, action needs to be taken and, We've actually got the council involved in a number of properties now, right? And they've one property of I can give you on Littleton Road, right? Where they've been out, they've done the assessment in the property, right? And they've said, okay, we're we're happy with everything that's uh, the the layout of the property and everything else inside the property is fine. But what they've asked for, right? They've said that we need we want you to install cameras now, right? So we want cameras on the back and the front of the building, right? And they want also, they want to make sure that there's a 10, 10 o'clock curfew on them as well to say that they shouldn't be having no visitors outside uh, after 10 o'clock and, you know, music and all all this, right? They've, so they've taken action on them and, you know, hopefully, well, it's, it's a step in the right direction and if they comply, then that's good. And if they don't, then we'll go back to the council and, you know, we'll keep on pursuing it till, they actually learn or if not we'll, if we have to close it then you know that's a, that's what the council have said that if if they don't comply then you know we can actually uh, close it down and that that is something that we don't want but if they're not going to listen then that is the only way to make them learn okay pc smith yeah i think you know the social housing is a key one isn't it because ultimately you don't want to be seen to be not offering people who do need accommodation accommodation. I mean, there, there's always, you know, there should always be a place for people, but at, at the same time, it needs to be highly regulated because at the end of the day, especially in HMOs and stuff, a lot of the people who go in there and a lot of the people we tend to deal with, they tend to be very vulnerable. For example, you know, they may be, they have drug problems. They may be there, um, you know, they're, sort of been abandoned by their family and they might have issues relating to that so you know there, there is a need for, to provide housing for them but at the same time as you said they need to be regulated you know as as the police i mean we we have various different powers obviously for example closure notices um and whatnot and especially relating to antisocial behavior and you know i've given my email address earlier um, so if there ever, you know, you ever have an issue which may not be, may not fall under sort of legality basis, so it might not be a crime or, you know, but, you know, there's issues in relation to a, a HMO or you need sort of police, um, you know, police advice or whatever on it, you know, please feel free to email me or whatnot. Um, in terms of the police, we sort of do tend to look at these issues. I mean, I think, especially as a result of, say, Stockland Green and places like that, where you know, it's a real, real, real issue. And we don't want it, you know, we don't want Stetra to become like that. Um, at the moment, I, I do know there's a department um, that is looking at HMOs and especially looking at um, the landlords in particular and how they sort of, as I think it was Andy said, creaming off the profits and sort of, you know, is that, are they do, are, are they doing what they should be doing as a as a landlord? You know, are they supporting the residents? Are they, you know, helping them out? And I think, HMOs are such a tricky one, but they, you know, they do need to be, the full community do need to sort of be buying into sort of accepting them, but as long as, um, you know, as long as they're sort of, shall we say, sticking to the rules and they're sort of, they're not disrupting the community too much. So, yeah, it's a tricky one. 
And we're always happy to support people with food or or clothes or or benefit advice or job, you know, looking for a job or, you know, we run all those services at, at the community centre. So, you know, people are people can be referred to us and we you know we haven't got a magic wand but um well, we can support people the best we can i i kind of agree that as a community we we don't have issues if they run properly the issues only occur is when you know we get antisocial behavior drug drug dealing drug taking you know and this is where the community, you know, because the community, right, is such, right, that they've never experienced these kind of issues before, right? And many of these roads across Yardley, Western Stetchwood, they are very quiet roads. Everybody keeps themselves to themselves, right? And when you've got these HMOs or supported accommodations crapping up, right, and they bring problems with this, that's where the community kind of gets affected. And that's when they, you know, kind of, one bad HMO, you know, creates another bad HMO in the area and, you know, kind of makes an issue for the area. But hopefully we've not, we have issues, but we're working on them issues. And, you know, going forward, it's, you know, how we regulate it. At the end of the day, right, is I believe we need the government and the council needs to be taking a harder approach. What I would say is that th this type of, you know, accommodation, if we think about it, it's a relatively new phenomenon. You know, 15 years ago, more than that, you wouldn't you know, it wasn't in the kind of lexicon to talk about HMOs and exempted providers. There were obviously accommodation providers and where, where there were pockets, but the prevalence of it now across Birmingham, I heard a statistic to say there's 22,000 units now across Birmingham and growing by the day. Now, these houses, when they were built, they were essentially some of the houses here, you know, there were family houses that were, they were never designed in the future to be converted into five bedroom units. You know, and this, the point then is, is, is that you are, you are introducing them when they're getting approved into residential areas where there are already pre-existing families, where there are already pre-existing communities set up. So the infrastructure really caters for that it never really caters for all of a sudden you've got a HMO stuck in between on a road where there's just seven or eight resident fa families and children. So all of a sudden you change the dynamic of a community and it alters the way that, that, that people engage with one another. So I think there needs to be strong. I know there are residents groups across Birmingham who are taking a really vigilant eye on all applications that come in and if it's legitimate and if all of those controls that you were talking about earlier, Councillor Baz, whether it's lighting or cameras, I mean, obviously that's fine. And there will be providers who are doing a good job. But equally, you know, we have to be careful that we're not introducing these types of properties in areas where it's already residential. It's going to you, it's going to it, it effectively ruins and blights, not just the, for the people living in and around those properties, but also as as uh, as the PC just said, there are vulnerable people living in this in this in these in this type of accommodation, typically. So they'll need that that kind of ancillary support that uh, uh, Andy was talking about. You know that there is, and it's then left to community groups to kind of fill the gap. So th th this is much of a wider picture here that, that that's emerging now, and I can only see this growing because there's a, there's greater demand. I think the wider picture is more housing, affordable housing needs to get built. Definitely, but then is that wider government? You know, planning restrictions need to need, need to be kind of developed in such a way that that more neighbourhoods can take control over the amount of social housing that's get, that's getting built, and the ones that are getting built need to be proper properly regulated and controlled. But so that's that's a that's a wider wider conversation, I think. That's right. Okay, thank you, Nadim, for that. Beverly, do we have any other priority that? I've not mentioned. No, no, that was it, Councillor. Those are the four key yeah. priorities that we that we pulled out. Because again, it's 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 um you all priorities up to next March um That's March, great. April. 
yeah so it's, it's it's like interim priorities if you like so but those are the key ones that um that i've pulled out based on on what we've had back okay is there any others that anybody would like to see on there Nadim? Would, uh, Councillor Baz, I would say making sure that our green spaces in particular, you and me have had these conversations mm -hmm. recently, making sure that the council, in terms of their responsibility, are making sure that these green spaces are generally tidy. So every quarter, I don't know, I don't know what the timetable is like, but these green spaces need to be kind of mowed every now and again because people use these parks and, and land. So so that, that would be good. I know it, it may feed into your other priority around um, community cohesion, but I, I think that, that, that the crucial thing is just to make sure that, that, you know, occasionally mowing stuff like this can make a big difference in the pain that people access. Well, it's funny enough, I had an email before the meeting regarding the uh, Yardley Fields, uh, the field there, because it's not been mowed, uh, mowed for a couple of weeks now, and the grass and literally stopping the kids from playing in that field. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, grass. yeah. Right, so I've sent that over to the parks manager to see why it's not been done. But we need to actually, you know, we need to preserve our open spaces and... That is why we've been doing, you, you're well aware of the work that we've been doing over the last couple of months yeah. regarding the fields and, you know, hope, we're, we're very hopeful that, you know, in the next couple of months we can actually do something positive there and, you know, something that can benefit the community because we've, we've not really got much open space in the world, but the, the ones that we do have, we should be like, doing all we can to, you know, showcase, you know, the best of it and bring putting stuff in place that's going to benefit the community. So, yeah, if that was something, Councillor Baz, whether that could be a side kind of priority, kind of linked into your main priorities, but it definitely is something that I think moving forward we need to think about. Definitely, can we add that to the community cohesion? Yes, I will do. So, I, I, we could, I mean, that could be added to community cohesion. And also, you've got, you know, the first one where we've got the environment as well. But I, I'll certainly add it in. I'll find an appropriate place to add in better protection of open spaces and, open and, and all, that goes, all that that goes with it. Yeah, I think preserving our open spaces and our public spaces and making the best use of them is key, really, isn't it? You know, otherwise we lose them, don't we? So we haven't got much as it is. So that's right. We're not really blessed with much open space in Yardley Western Stretchwood, but what we do have, like you said, Andy, we don't want to be losing. So you know, we need to put things in place, right, that secure the future of them open spaces for the community, which is what we should be. Because what we found, right, with the Yardley Fields, right, is when the grass wasn't cut, right, for a couple of years, we find out that the community actually did use it. And when it's been cut now for the last two years, we've had positive feedback from the residents to say, you know, it's made a big difference. And like I said earlier, I had an email to asking why it's not been cut and why, because with the hot weather and everything, it draws out the community to play there and we need to be making the best of our open spaces and I mean, is, it, is it marked out with any pitches or anything like that or? at the moment andy no it's all about money at the moment but we're hopeful we've got a meeting on thursday and we're hopeful that we can actually come to some kind of solution to you know make it see what we want as a community, what's going to benefit the community, right? Because then, you know, we can work towards that. Yeah, definitely. But uh, Councillor Baz, I'll just put in the chat. Have you got any friends of groups for the open spaces and, and, and parks and stuff? I mean, Andy, is there anything out on the Oakland you know, friends of group? Yeah, well, there's, there's the Oakland steering group, which is because it which has seen it through all its development uh, and and there's the you know the litter picking group um 
So there's a lot, yeah, there are quite a few groups that that are very interested in the Oaklands and do things from time to time. So um, there's a Facebook group, um, uh, the Oaklands Recreation Ground. And the, yeah, uh, and so there's been quite a campaign to get football pitches put back on there, as, as you know. And uh, but but I mean, if you look at the pocket park on the Coventry Road, there's a group of residents there that have uh, have transformed it out of nothing. They've built planters and they've built things, and and they want to make the best use of it and painted it and uh, and done things to it. So. I mean, I think something like that for for Yardley Fields. If we could get a group of uh, of residents that are interested in um, making it usable and putting on what they want, then well, you know, and also, you know, the more more it gets used, the less antisocial behaviour there is. Um, we sometimes get a little bit more litter, but but. You know, if you've got a little group that goes with it, that can be tackled. But, you know, for health and mental health, and I mean, I think the Oaklands was a lifesaver for many, many people over the lockdown. And I've never, ever seen it used as much as during the lockdown when it was full of people using it. For, you know, it, it was a joy to see it being so busy and the same for for yardly fields really these places need to be kept and developed and used by the community i agree the football across the oaklands during the lockdown right is what the numbers are but we've got something there to be proud of and i know it's not on the same scale in yardly fields but if we can do something that's kind of, you know, bring out the community and we can say to the community here, this is what we've done for you and something for them to be proud of. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and they do, the community are are, are, are transforming the pocket park on the Coventry yes, Road. Right. Mm. And, um, you know, so it can be done. It, it just needs, needs people to get together with an idea, really. That's right. Nadim, can we have your input on this? Yeah, I, I said it was uh, when I raised it, uh, and I just looked at a chat that that Beverly raised. It, are there any friends of groups for Birmingham? So I think the meeting that we'll have on the twenty fourth will be a great. And I'll speak of a yardy yeah. field, but similarly, I think that will be a great um, place to kind of look at opportunities to develop uh, friends groups. Uh, for those open spaces, I'm thinking in particular about yardly fields, but also. The, the great green space that we've got behind the, the Cascades Leisure Centre. Oakland's Park, I mean, I have fond memories of the park runs I was doing there before lockdown. Um, hopefully the park runs will continue back in Oakland's Park soon. So, you know, we, we do, the, the, these are places that people go, have picnics, go, you know, we want to see them nice and tidy. We want to utilise them. And, and over time, I think, as months go by, more and more people will see that these groups are emerging, developing, more people will have more interest and hopefully it will be that snowball effect. And what we'll do, we'll amplify some of these discussions as we go forward in the months ahead, at our village forum meetings, these ward meetings, for example, and it's only healthy discussion. So yeah, I, I, think, there's really, I think there's a really great segue, I think, into some of your priorities that you've talked about today. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything that you'd like to see on that priority list or the world plan? Um, I mean, to be honest, I think the priority list is, you know, I, th I think I think it's something that can sort of be worked towards quite quite well uh, in terms of collectively. So, I mean, obviously, as the police, we have, shall we say, different ones on top of that, for example, drugs, you know, dealing with drugs under 25 violence and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, I think that's very police specific. Uh, you know, I think I think in terms of priorities, I think they're you know they're really good. And I, I you know, you, I heard you guys talking about um, you know the green spaces and specifically Yardley Park. You know, I think the friends of 
or you know open spaces group i think that for yardley park in particular i think you know we've had quite a number of asb related reports um and we you know we're trying to really police yardley park and at the moment due to cuts is quite difficult you know we're obviously getting stretched but i think that's that would be a really useful thing for that park because you know i think it has it's a you know a beautiful park and it's got a chance to really be used for re, you know lots of good reasons by you know by all who go there and i think having something like a friend you know friends or group a group related to that who sort of you know manage that type of thing or sort of encourage people you know is is really would be really effective there yeah the more it's used the more you push out the antisocial behavior you know Oakland's is you hardly get any antisocial behaviour this time of year. Come the middle of the winter, all sorts of things go on in the dark because nobody goes up there. You know, it's so the more people you can get using it, it does work. Yeah, definitely. I think you know. I think that's a that's a really good point. I think you know, Auckland's obviously we tend to get issues around Auckland's wreck. A recreational park but I think within it it tends to be when it's you know well used you don't tend to get the issues do you? No well people don't want to be seen do they and once it's when it's full of people there's no opportunity. I think we're happy with what we've discussed Okay, that, that's that's great then. Um, we 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 can just tidy all up after obviously the next couple of days, and then we can get that um get it all sorted. Okay. So can I just give you a quick councillors update, and then we'll have any other business. And we can pull it. We'll take it from there. Okay. Councillors update. We've got the clean up this Thursday, which we mentioned earlier. A Littleton Road and Redton Grove. It's a community-led cleanup, right? So we're hoping for a good turnout. So if you're available and got some time to spare, please Friday, no, sorry, Thursday at five o'clock. And then on Saturday, we've got another big cleanup at Oaklands Park starting at 10 o'clock. And at both events, we've got all the little equipment will be provided. So all you've got to do is just turn up and We'll have all the equipment there for you. So, and, you know, it's all about, you know, taking pride in your area. That is what we're trying to essentially, we're trying to create, right, is that take pride in your area because when people see us cleaning up, right, it's going to give them that satisfaction and give them that belief that, you know, they should be taking part. And even if they don't take part, you know, it might give them that kind of lesson to say that, you know, we shouldn't be dropping the litter or what keeping our surroundings clean. Then we'll have two events that we've got planned for this well the next few days. We've had Mill House Road resurfaced and we've had a lot of positive feedback from the residents from Mill House because those that have travelled up and down Mill House Road over the last four or five years will know how bad that road was with potholes. Right? So we've had it completely resurfaced and a lot of positive feedback, right, that, you know, it needed doing, and we're glad that we finally got it done. Similar, Wash Lane, Wash Lane is a disgrace at the moment with the amount of potholes that we have on the Wash Lane. We we do know that it's in a plan for it to get done, but there's no date set, so we're going to be pushing the cabinet member tomorrow at full council and uh, the highways partners as well to say that, listen, we need to be putting a date next to Wash Lane so we can get that resurfaced and also the, we've got speed calming measures hopefully going in sometime in September. So if we can combine the two, it might be better where we can get the road resurfaced and we can get speed, uh, speed bumps put in as well. So that's something to look forward to on Wash Lane. We've got, at the moment, Work has started on Stony Lane on my side of the ward, where we've got uh, double curbs and ballads going in to protect the grass verges. Because under the old boundary, the odd side of 
the odd side of the only lane got done. No, sorry, not the odd side. The even side of Stony Lane got done. We double curved all along Stony Lane, but the odd side, my side of the ward didn't, because it was a different ward. But then we've had complaints from residents to say that that side is one side of Stony Lane looks good, and the other side, because people are parking on the grass verges and everything, it looks a disgrace, right? So we've uh, got double curves and ballads going in as we speak, right? And hopefully that should be done in the next week or so. And that will make a big difference as well, I believe, because it's a main road, right? And we need to be protecting our green greenery, right? So these ballads and uh, double curbs will make a big difference. Apart from that, there is not, we've had the odd misconnection of rubbish. And what I would say to residents is that please, on your collection day, right? If it goes past half one, you need to be letting me know straight away that your rubbish ain't being collected or recycling. So I can take it up with the senior management at Redfern. Because we had an issue on the, the ring that the rubbish hadn't been collected for two weeks. But I was only told about this on the Wednesday of the second collection, right? That it wasn't being collected, right? So we had to take it up with senior management and then within like matter of 24 hours we had the rubbish picked up so residents I I, I, all, I told the residents that in future instead of ringing the council uh, uh, switchboard to report the miscollections come directly to me right then I can get that done going through the manager at Redford Depot right, so we can get all the rubbish picked up in a quick uh, quick time instead of having to wait two weeks and especially with this kind of heat wave that we've had Right, the smell up there, right, the stench was very bad, right? So, it's, you know, at the end of the day, the Redford Depot were put in a situation because of staffing issues, and but there was no backup plan. And I don't believe any resident, any street should be having to wait two weeks for their rubbish to be collected. So, in future, please, if there is any miscollections, let me know after half one on your collection day, then, you know, I can take it up straight away with the relevant people and get these roads cleared straight away. Okay. We can move on to any other business. Is there anything else anybody wants to raise? I just cancel back to very quickly. You know, the, the, the organised later pick on Thursday. Where's the meeting point? Is, is that going to be around where the, on Albert Road, where, where you got the remembrance, um, the that part is, of... At the roundabout, so where the Remembrance uh, Memorial is, yeah. uh, we're, going to be, we're going to be meeting there. This is, the plan is, right, basically we've advertised it as a little bit for Littleton and Redfern Grove. Depending on the numbers, if we get a good turnout, we're going to go on to Redfern Grove. If we don't, we're just going to concentrate on Littleton Road because we're going to be like pushed for time. If we yeah, we've, got the, we've got the meeting after that. We've got the meeting in the evening as well, right? So if we get a good turnout, right, then that'll give us the uh, hands that we need to go on to Red Cone as well to get that done. But if the numbers are low, right, then we're just going to concentrate on Littleton Road. And that's for Thursday. And then we're looking at Alba Road the following week, but we've not decided a time or date for that. Andy, anything else you want to highlight? No, I'm all good, thank you. I think the, uh, I think there might be a police update. Okay, we well, know we're gonna. We go, I was just gonna go to the police. PC Smith, would you? Is there an update for Stetchford, please? Um, in terms of any anything happening, any positive, anything? Oh, um. Obviously, at the moment, we're um, you know we're looking at obviously specifically police-related matters. However, we are trying to organise um, we are trying to organise a um, well, I'm trying to think what the name is now um, neighbourhood watch. So at the moment, we you know we're trying to set up a neighbourhood watch um, within the area, and we you know we we've got a couple of residents, but it'd be really useful if um, you guys could sort of advertise that. Um, that way then, you know, we can sort of get more, especially things like litter picking and stuff like that. And, you know, we can sort of 
um, try and lend some manpower towards that then as well? Well, we're in the process of uh, having a leaflet made that's been provided to every resident in the ward. That's something that we can put on the uh, street watch because uh, Yard, Sites Yardley Police, they've actually put that idea to us that they want to be setting up a street watch in the area. And I also had a uh, conversation with the sergeant as well at Stetchford that this is something that they want to be rolling out as well. So we'll put it out in our leaflet and also on social media and we'll see if we get any response from the residents. And if we do, then we, we can always, you know, implement other ideas through the street watch. Yeah, P PC Smith, can I just ask, if you've got any information that you want to send out, like your newsletters and stuff, can you send it to me as well? And I can send it out to the wider, wider mailing list. Yeah, of course I can. Yeah, because I mean, yeah. that's helpful as well, because then, you know, we can send it far and wide and people can also circulate it to, to their contacts as well. So I'm happy to do that if you just let me have your latest Could I get your email address if that's okay? Pardon? Could I get your email address if that's okay? Yes, I'll stick it in the chat box for you. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Is there anything else anybody wants to add? No. Okay, I believe, well, we've had a very positive meeting where we've put our priorities together and I believe if in the next eight, nine months we can actually work on these priorities, I will... We'll have a word that, you know, we can look back on and, you know, be happy with because there's a lot of positive, there is a lot of positive stuff in Stetchford and Yardley, right, that we need to build on. And I believe, you know, if we work as a community, because all, all of these priorities are only going to be successful if the community, the police, the council, the councillor, community groups come together and work together on so you know we can actually and we're already doing most of this anyway right so is this a matter of you know carrying on engaging with the right people promoting all the good work that we're doing in the world and the more we promote it the more people get to hear about it and the more people will want to come and join us and the more you know the more we actually bring the community get together, right? it'll make a community that, you know, everybody will be proud of. And I believe we can, we will actually achieve that working together. Beverly, is there anything else that we want to final? Uh, no, Councillor, I was just putting in my thanks in the chat box, um, just yeah. telling everybody to just saying thank you, take care, stay safe, and thanks for your attendance and participation. Thank you. Well, I'm, a, I'm happy to close the meeting. I just want to thank everybody for attending. Been very positive. And, you know, all I would say is, you know, please continue following the government guidelines, you know, continue supporting the vulnerable that we do have in our world. And, you know, keep safe. We're not far off from coming out of this lockdown. I'm hoping that, you know, we won't have to extend this date after the line. If we continue as we are, because Yardley Western Statute have been very good in have they follow the government guidelines, right? So this continues. It's only a matter of weeks now before we can actually come out of all of this and uh, you know, then we can get back to seeing each other and doing working together. So I don't, we won't set a date for the next meeting till, well, we'll, after this meeting, we'll set a date for the next one and we'll, we'll let you know of that in future. But I'm happy to end the meeting then. So thank you very much for everybody for attending. Thank you. Thank you.